Hey, welcome to the channel. It's uh, it's Wednesday, uh, probably about 12 o'clock, and uh, I thought I'd come up to uh, one of my favorite temples, and uh, it's Wat Jed Yat, and it's one of the temples that a lot of people overlook when they come to Chiang Mai because it's outside the city and they don't really know, you know, know it's here. And it, to me, it's one of the prettier temples in Chiang Mai, and it's one you really need to go see. Uh, it's probably about 100 baht by tuk tuk to get out here from inside the city and then right across the street is the Grand View Hotel that has a really fantastic uh, lunch buffet that you could you could hit after you walk you know spend an hour walking through the temple but uh, anyway I'll turn the camera around uh, I've got a little story to tell you about two Americans both by the name of Mike who had a really bad experience here in Thailand and um, I don't see it as it's just a bad situation and I'll explain it to you and I don't think that the, the uh, police were involved in it it's no conspiracy or anything like that but um, something really bad happened to him and I'll tell you about it as we go along our walk and we're just gonna walk through this temple and then I'm gonna hit the streets out on the other side of the temple and see what we can find back in there but I'll turn the camera around and stop talking for right now anyway this is really beautiful and it's you know, there's a history behind this place and I'm not going to go into it. I'll leave a, a link in the description that will tell you the history of this temple. But it's really one of the ones that uh, you really need to see it. Um, it's really beautiful and it's nice and peaceful. There's nobody here. I'm pretty much alone other than, you know, a few sellers here. We'll walk through the temple and then we'll walk out by the other side, other, other end of the, the temple to the streets. I'm going to slide the camera around so you can see. It's a beautiful day today. It's about 27 degrees Celsius, real cloudy. We had a lot of rain yesterday and last night. And uh, matter of fact, we'll probably be lucky if we don't get wet today. But the story of Mike and Mike, two Mikes, both Americans, uh, nothing common between them except the experience that they went through. And uh, when I read it, I was really shocked. Uh, it it uh, kind of scared me a little bit. But uh, the first Mike, a guy by the name of Mike Mora, He's a fire chief in Pennsylvania, been fire chief for like 30 years and uh, really well respected in the community. And he took a job over here for General Electric and he was doing some work for General Electric over here. And I'm not exactly sure how, how, uh, how long he was here. But uh, Anyway, he's here and he does his job and he gets ready to go back home. He wanted to get home by Christmas and this was in November. It was 2019. So he packs up his suitcase, gets in the taxi and gets to the airport and checks in, checks his baggage and, and uh, you know, goes through security. And security stops him. And, you know, he's kind of bewildered, you know, what, what's going on? Uh, you know... He didn't have anything, and you know, wasn't carrying anything. Didn't, didn't, you know, didn't bring anything. Didn't buy anything, and you know, he pretty much dumbfounded why they were stopping him. Well, turns out that uh, they found a bullet in one of his bags, and uh, immediately took him into custody. Uh, from what I understand, they took him, you know, took him right then and then, you know, put him in custody and, uh, you know, he was trying to explain that he had no idea how that bullet got in his suitcase. One single bullet. Didn't have any guns, wasn't around any guns here, didn't have any guns at home. Uh, you know, there was just no reason for that bullet to be in his suitcase. The guy's freaking out, you know. <laughs> He's... You know, next thing you know, he's stripped down, shackled, and, and thrown in uh, thrown in the prison system. Well, he gets a hold of his family and gets a hold of the, the consulate, and uh, his family gets a hold of some senators and some congressmen and stuff, and they start writing letters over here and uh, 
the embassy gets involved in it. I don't know exactly what good they did, but he was lucky. Um, they ended up dismissing the charges against him and letting him go home. And now in the meantime, this was this was around Christmas by the time this happened. He'd spent spent, you know, a good good few days in, in jail. But apparently they didn't bond him out, the best I can tell. Uh, it doesn't say that, that he was bonded out and, and uh, but you know he may have. But he was he, he had to stay here until the uh, you know they, they were able to get him released. Well in the meantime Another American, a guy by the name of uh, Mike Jones, black guy. Another guy, you know, family man, has a son, and, and uh, he'd come over here on vacation for his birthday, and he had planned to go back home, you know, and get home in time for Christmas. Goes through airport security, they stop him. And, uh, you know, he's just going crazy. You know, thinking, what's going on here? What's going on? And, and uh, sure enough, what do they find? They find a bullet in a duffel bag that he had. And the funny thing was, he had bought the duffel bag in Thailand when, while he was here. And uh, so he gets on the phone to his parents and able to get, get hold of them. They send a bunch of money over here, hire him a lawyer. And get him. He he manages to get out on bail. Meantime, they release Mike. Mike gets back on a plane and heads back for uh, for the U.S. And he gets back here about Christmas time. As a matter of fact, I think it was Christmas Eve when he got back. And uh, you know, his family had done a GoFundMe page for him and all that. And apparently, they had raised a bunch of money. I have no idea how much they paid to get him out, but I'm sure there was a dollar amount put on it. Um, whether it was a fine or, or whatever. Or, you know, did like the uh, the British guy did, and more than likely that's what happened. I, I've not been able to find much information on it, other than the fact that it happened, and, and uh, you know, a lot of times they don't really, they don't, they'll, they'll, they'll put the media out on this stuff that it happens, but they don't, you never hear the conclusion of it. So it's kind of hard to find out exactly what happened afterwards that got him out other than the fact that uh, he had all kinds of people pulling for him here which I think helped well, we're gonna make it out this way towards the entrance actually this is the exit and we'll hit the streets out here and get walking around but anyway the Mike uh, Jones guy his family send I think I think they said something like twenty thousand dollars over here and uh, hire him a lawyer and uh, he has to report back every 12 days back to the court system to find out about his case. Well, finally, you know, and he, he, uh, he starts getting, to, you know, where they're gonna end it and they're gonna dismiss it on him. But his visa is about to expire and he doesn't have his passport. You know, they, the minute you make bond, they confiscate your passport. And according to what his mother said, the, uh, the time element for him to get his passport back was going to be about 80 days. In the meantime, while that happened, his, pa his visa would expire, which would have put him over on overstay. So as soon as he hits the, the gates at the airport, they're going to put him back in custody. And he was real worried about that. Somehow or another, the, uh, the consulate got involved in it. And I think they, they were able to speed things up. He was able to get home, but you know, he spent a little bit of extra time here that he didn't uh, didn't expect to spend. So, there's never been any speculation on, on how the bullets got into the suitcases. Um, both guys totally deny that they had any contact with any type of, type of firearms. They didn't, uh, they weren't shooters, they weren't, uh, you know, they weren't the kind of people that would normally travel around with bullets in their suitcase. You know, me being it, an ex-cop, a lot of times I traveled and stuff, and, and I would have ammunition in my suitcase. And, you know, because I'd, I'd usually, if I was traveling on business or something like that, I'd, I'd always carry a gun with me, and you know, which was legal, and I had forms to fill out. But, uh, you know, it could have been very easy for me to leave a bullet in my suitcase. 
at some time. But uh, these guys had no connection. No connection with anything that would have had anything to do with a gun. So as far as I could tell, you know, they both got back to the States. You know, it, it was definitely a, an experience for them, something that I'm sure they don't ever want to go through again. Uh, so, you know, the bottom line is, I sus this is what I suspect. You know, I suspect that somebody planted the bullet in it. I don't think it was security. I don't think it was the police. I don't think it was anything to do with government because security at the airport, uh, there, there's cameras everywhere. And these, you know, security agents, they know they're being, they're being photographed. They're not gonna, you know, they don't wanna do the work on it. You know, they're not gonna slip a bullet in your suitcase. So I think it was probably somebody outside of the airport maybe they had contact with, with one person who was who's you know a common denominator being a taxi driver or you know a uh, baggage handler you know out outside maybe they didn't tip somebody and you know their way of getting even with them was to put a bullet in their suitcase but uh so the, you know the, the the moral of this story is is pack your own suitcase and no matter what country you go to you know, know what's in your suitcase and don't take your eyes off of it. Uh, you know, don't, uh, don't let it out of your sight. Um, you know, when I travel, I usually carry a, carry a bag and I, I, I don't check it. I always push it through, but I never take my eyes off that bag. You know, the only time I don't see it is when it goes through the screen. You know, when they push it through that little... Uh, x-ray machine and I'm standing there on the outside when it comes through to make sure that I get it. Oh, there's a little neat place back in here. I never knew this little shopping center was here. Chiang Mai FC. Huh. Well, we'll walk down this way. But, uh, you know, you just, you have to be aware of, of what you're carrying. And the same way with medication. You know, if you're coming over here and you're bringing medication, make sure you've got a prescription for it. And make sure you only bring enough, you know, for, for the time that you're going to be here. And, you know, maybe a couple extra days that you, uh, you know, that you might get held over. Uh, I've never heard of anybody having any problems but you just don't want to take that chance. It's just not worth it. Uh, oh, this is an old condo. We'll walk up here a little ways. But those guys, you know, man, I, I just can't imagine. Well, let's see what's down here. I can't imagine what they went through. You know, it's one thing when you do something wrong and you get caught, you know, you pretty much know you're going to suffer the consequences. But, you know, you're just, uh, you're just walking along, you know, anxious to get home and, and uh, want to get on the plane and get back out of there. And bam, you're snatched up. That has got to be a, just a feeling I would not want to experience. Yeah, it's a bunch of little houses back in here. I don't think I can go any further. Let's get back out on the road there. Hey, I want to thank everybody that's subscribed to the channel. I really appreciate it. And, uh, if you haven't subscribed, you know, subscribe to the channel. Click the notification bell, and that way you'll get notified anytime I put up a video. This is a neat little area. We'll get out here and go back to the right again. The, uh, I read where the punishment for, for possession of uh, ammunition is something like two years in prison or 80,000 baht fine. And that's, uh, that's pretty crazy. And it's, to legally have a gun here is, is pretty difficult. I couldn't, I couldn't have one. Now, Lek could have one. But uh, for me to put my hands on it would put me in jeopardy and I really don't need one I don't feel the need to have one 
Uh, I, I can't think of a situation where I've ever felt like I wish I had a gun here. Oh, these are all old houses in here. But really, you know, when you pack your suitcases to come here, check them, check them good. Make sure there's nothing in the side pockets that you don't know about or that you forgot about. And uh, don't let anybody stick anything in it. And it, this got me one time when I had come over here and I've, I've told this story before. Uh, we'd come over to spend two weeks with Lex parents and uh, there's a little shop in here. Maybe sometime. Hello. Hello. Uh, we're uh, we're taking off out of uh, Swanapum, and you know we just kind of laid back and and uh, I had usually when we came over here on vacation I'd bring two bags, and then I'd carry one as well, and. Uh, Lick leans over to me, she goes, oh, mom put a mango seed in your suitcase. And I said, she did what? You know, she said, she, put, she wanted you to grow a mango when you get back to Tennessee. And I thought, oh my God. And uh, I was really, you know, once, once it's, hello. Once it's in there, there's not much you can do. It's down that road. something over there but uh, I mean I was in the plane what I could there was nothing I could do and as many times as we had come here and, um, that's the first time I ever really worried about it and we had bought four kilos of, of squid to take back with us I say we she and that was also in the suitcase and I wasn't really worried about it, but we're coming through, uh, we land in Atlanta and we go through immigration. I'm pretty much sweating bullets and I've told this story before, but I'll tell it again. And, uh, cause it's kind of funny. I filled out the form and, you know, I didn't put down there, I had a mango seed. There was just no way in hell I was going to do that. And I wasn't going to declare the, the four kilos of, uh, yeah, see, there's the Chiang Mai Grand View. Great place to eat for lunch. Um, I wasn't going to put that I had, you know, the squid or the mango seed in there. There's just no way. Well, number one on the mango seed, I didn't know it was there until we had already took off. And there wasn't a damn thing I could do about it. But um, we go through, through uh, immigration, then we go through customs. I had the guy the slip. He takes it and waves me on. And uh, we're just about to get to the place where you have to dump your luggage a second time to go uh, domestic and I feel a tap on the shoulder and I look and there's a custom agent and he's pointing me into the x-ray machines in the agriculture department and I'm thinking oh shit I'm screwed you know wasn't anything I could do uh, you know we're right there and there's people all around and stuff I wasn't going to start pulling stuff out of my suitcase right there I figured well we'll just uh We'll just go through and face the music. So anyway, Lex in front of me, she walks up to the counter, you know, where the x-ray machines are, and there's, there's an agent behind the screens, and then there's another one on the other end. And uh, I'm loading the suitcases on the, uh, on the belt. And he looks over at Lex, he says, you have, are you carrying any food products? Well, you know, Leck and I had already discussed it. She looks at me, you know, with, with the deer in the headlight eyes. And I didn't say shit. I wasn't saying nothing. And uh, he asked her again. This time he asks her in Spanish. And she's still, she's not responding. She doesn't know what to do. And uh, I'm not saying nothing. He hadn't asked me anything. I wasn't going to say anything. Because I would have had to tell him the truth. And uh, anyway, he says, ah, just go on. Waves her on through, waves me through. We loaded those suitcases up on the trolley, and I, 
moved as quick as I could to get him in the in the chute to go to the the Delta ticket terminal or the the Delta uh, baggage handlers and uh, ever since that time we've never carried anything back I won't let her bring back any food or, or anything another time we uh, she got me involved in this one one of her friends we were coming from from the states and one of her friends called her her Thai friends and wanted her to uh, bring a cell phone over to one of their friends here in in, uh, in Bangkok and you know Lek agreed to do it and then she tells me about it so we're pretty much hung it wasn't so bad I went through it and I, I took everything apart and uh, opened the box up and you know, made sure there wasn't anything inside. I cracked the case on it, and I, I was fairly certain we were in good shape. So we, when we get over here, she calls the people up. They, oh, yeah, 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 so-and-so sent, sent the phone, and, and uh, we'll be right over to pick it up. Well, they show up, and they've got a great big bag of clothes that they want to send back to the U.S. with us. And I just I told, like I said, tell them we don't have enough room. And... Uh, so we didn't take anything back with us. But uh, it's best not to get involved in that. Just, uh, you know, it doesn't cost that much to ship stuff. And uh, it's not worth, it's worth the chance of getting yourself jammed up over something that, you know, just trying to be nice to somebody. It's just not worth it. My conscience gets me when I, you know, get in a situation like that saying, you know, could I be in trouble? Could I not be in trouble? You know, it just, it's not worth the thought. It's a busy little area back here. But yeah, I'll bet those two guys um, I, I can't imagine how they felt, you know. I did read two other cases. One was a girl and she got caught coming in with the with bullets. Um, and basically she was a target shooter back in the States and uh, she just left two bullets in her in her suitcase I don't know what the outcome of that was it didn't say um, the other one and I remember when this one happened was a, uh, a guy from Norway and he was a uh, he was a policeman in Norway a recruit and he had come through He'd gone through uh, security in Oslo, and then when he got to Suwannapum, sure enough, he had two bullets in his suitcase. And, you know, he, said, he basically told me, he said, I didn't, you know, they're mine for sure, but, you know, they, I didn't, I didn't know, realize they were in there. Apparently, he had been on some training, and, you know, just like I had done a few times, and left a couple of bullets in his suitcase, and they locked him up. And I don't know what the outcome was of it. He got his embassy involved in it. But uh, he definitely, he got charged and went through the system. Uh, I'd love to know what happened, but the chances of that happening are probably pretty slim. So, you know, it's you just got to be on your toes, know what you're doing. Oh, this is a neat little restaurant. Hmm. A lot of places to eat around here. Photocopy place. There's food everywhere. I'll get on the other side where you can see the food better. Well, these things are my weakness, but I'm going to pass them up. Those are so good. Yeah, she's just getting them off the, off the grill. Well, let's keep walking this way. Lots of food here. Now, there's a hot pan right there. 
food smells so good. Fried banana. making noodle. All kinds of stuff on this road. I've not really, you know, I haven't walked back here before, so I, I really didn't know it was all here. It's a beef place, it's closed. And let's see what we got on the other side. Barber shop. Wow, that's some cool art. Okay, this takes you right out straight to Canal Road. Chicken Pork Cafe. Seem to be, be a lot of condos here in this area. Well, I'm going to close out the video here and walk back to the car, and I hope you enjoyed this. And like I said, when you're if you're traveling, make sure you know what's in your suitcase. And even if you don't, you know what's in your suitcase. Don't take your eyes off your suitcase after you, uh, you know, you leave your house. Make sure you're, uh, it's in your control. Seal it, lock it, do whatever you have to do to protect yourself, because you never know when something like that's going to happen. I'm sure these two guys had absolutely no. Uh, you know, they didn't know those that bullet was in their suitcases. I, I don't think they put it in there. I don't think they, uh, I don't think they had any clue. And uh, somehow or another, they got set up. And fortunately, they made it home, but not after it cost them quite a bit of money. So just be aware of that. But anyway, appreciate you stopping in. We'll talk to you later. Bye bye.